All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Path of Rage and our weekly coverage of the latest in Star Citizen news. We got a bit with Inside Star Citizen to go over, some discussions that were had in Star Citizen Live with the Vehicle Features team, a very interesting update to the roadmap, and a bit more. So, I am Rage at Games, and let's get into it. First things first is this week is still the Invictus launch week, which is going on till May 29th. Uh, right now it is Crusader on the showroom floor, so you can check out the C2s, uh, cargo variants, and the, the the one with the bomb bay, or the A1s, and the A2s, pardon me, and the spirits, whatnot. You can go in, you can fly this entire week and up to the 29th for free you don't have to pay any money to support the game or whatnot again it's free fly and when you're at the expo at the actual invictus launch week all of the ships that you can see on the showroom floor can be rented in game for two days for free so you can try all of the ships available to offer over the course of the next week if you haven't tried out star citizen yet and you're interested in it I suggest that now is the time for you to do so. Again, it doesn't cost you anything. If you do, use my creator code down in the description below. Get yourself a little extra money. That will carry over if you do decide to back the game and jump in. And again, i said it before and I'll say it a million times. Don't spend anything more than the $45 minimum package unless you feel it's worth it. There's no need to spend hundreds of dollars on a ship. They're all available in-game or will be at some point. Anyway. Moving on to Inside Star Citizen. Inside Star Citizen this week was all about two new vehicles. The Saber Firebird, which is a variant of the Saber Raven, uh, which was currently brought up to gold standard. The Firebird is uh, going to be available during Invictus launch week, as well as the Ursa Medivac. The Saber, like I said, has been brought up to gold standard, and this led to the Raven uh, getting the same treatment and the components being added in, metrics brought up to speed, that kind of thing, which in turn led to the development of the Firebird, which is a missile-based variant similar to uh, uh, the Shrike, I believe it is. It will sit between the, the base Saber and the Raven in terms of durability and is one of only two missile-based fighters in the entire game at the moment. The new Ursa Medivac, or Nursa as it's being called already, uh, is a variant of the Ursa Rover that will come in handy for players who are more into the FPS uh, side of things as it will allow for backers to revive much closer to their objectives when they've been taken out on something like uh, a bunker or a distribution raid. Uh, they'll have multiple paint schemes that are also coming to the base Ursa as well. And the interior has been altered from the base version, as you can imagine. It has a tier 3 med bed now and a more ambulance style look at it. This one has caused kind of a quote unquote controversy in the Star Citizen community simply because some people think that this is going to negate the death of the spaceman mechanic that was coming in where you know dying has a cost you don't just respawn endlessly without any downsides which to be fair the marketing for the urza medevac kind of made it look like but that's the way it currently is they have said that death of a spaceman is still coming that this is just a way for players to revive closer to their current location where they died but when Death of a Spaceman comes in, people will still be suffering ongoing injuries. They won't be able to just continually and repeatedly revive. As I said, both of these vehicles are available for purchase on Invictus Launch Week. And just like with the rest of anything going on in Invictus Launch Week right now, uh, you can try them out for free. Just jump into the game and give it a go. Star Citizen Live this week had a discussion information session with the vehicle team leads the first 15 minutes of the entire episode were spent discussing just how the vehicle team works what other teams they have to work alongside of in order to bring a vehicle to the game and surprise surprise it's pretty much 
every other team in the company. Uh, considering that ships are an especially core component of Star Citizen and vehicles in general, this really shouldn't be a surprise. This was them talking about how they they managed to use the design teams, the engineering and programming teams with the art teams to actually make, build, and implement the ships into the game. They then spent about 12 minutes discussing how they decide what gets made and when. Capital ships obviously take far longer than a light fighter to implement, and the scheduling comes down to who is available from a finite amount of employees to the current needs of the project, while also trying to keep up a fairly regular pace to vehicle releases. They pointed out that, you know, they could put the entire team on capital ships, but then you'd only get one, two, three ships entirely for an entire year, which is not something anyone in this project wants. People are always clamoring for, if not more ships, for the ships that they have to be finished and completed or whatnot. So <laughs> we have to take it as it is with manpower, of course. They pointed out that keeping up on this pace one can entail a lot more work than we on the outside might think and they use the example of salvaging to show this because not only do they need to get the vulture the salvage ship itself ready and in the game and working but they also had to go and update every other vehicle in the game to get them to support the salvaging feature itself and actually be salvageable which again it's well it's not actually work on the salvage ship it's work that's involving that salvage ship and that it's one more thing that they have to add to the schedule one thing they touched upon was uh, why they add new vehicles over finishing or even starting some of the older vehicles and they spent 14 minutes discussing this and how in many cases the decision is made based on gameplay features uh, building a new ship around a gameplay feature tends to be more efficient time-wise than refitting an existing ship. They use the example of the Carrick and how its original concept wouldn't physically fit with the established metrics of the game and how a great deal of time and work had to be spent just to bring it up to spec. At the same time, they could crank out a, the Starliner at any point, but there's no gameplay features currently ready to support it, such as you know, NPCs getting on and off ships and NPCs as cargo in general uh, isn't in the game. So that's why the Starliner isn't being worked on currently. They also mentioned that doing variants is something that is happening now as the devs bring older vehicles up to standard and adding a few changes to get a variant while doing so is much more efficient use of those resources than starting a brand new vehicle from scratch. And they also highlighted the fact that these variants are actually very good projects for newer devs uh, who have come to the team as they have a base to start with and learn on how CIG does all this implementation and bringing the ships to the diverse and to develop their own skills as well and kind of onboard them into the process. They spent a few more minutes as well talking about modularity, how they plan on going forward with that in the future, uh, the use of med beds in the current and future builds, like I mentioned with the death of a spaceman. Uh, finally, we got some updates on the current vehicles in active development with the base Zeus and one of its variants coming in 4.0. Uh, the Legionnaire and some variants of the current releases are all being worked on actively right now and they straight up said that the Polaris which is highly anticipated will be released at the uh, IAE this year in November so people who've been looking forward to the Polaris well get your uh, hearts racing because it's almost here moving on to the roadmap update this is where things get interesting because this week the release view was updated and we now have 4.0 on the horizon for quarter three, not the end of the year, quarter three. End of October uh, usually is when it comes out around IAE November time. And right off the bat, server meshing is planned to be in by the third quarter of this year. That is massive. That also includes the mission system refactor and the transit system refactor with the trams and the elevators because all of this has to be 
configured to work with the server meshing. And the server meshing is, is the next big step in Star Citizen's development. We've got the replication layer going on right now. It's what 323 is based on and we're all testing out and has surprisingly been a fairly stable patch. It did not reach the 318 levels of, <laughs> of buggy glitchiness that, that we were all kind of expecting. The idea that server meshing is going to be in a quarter three this year, tentatively, might always get pushed back, but tentatively, this is huge, folks, because this is when they get this in and Star Citizen starts to really pick up. I, I can't wait to see uh, the testing of this start happening on Evocati. I'm looking forward to it. Also added to the roadmap is the jump points and the pyro system, which will have six planets and six moons. Although those moons, if I remember correctly, are all six of them are around the fifth planet in Pyro. Um, Pyro is also going to bring on the solar burst, which is like a high energy projectile wave that erupts from the sun. I, they're, they're damaging and dangerous, and it's kind of a cool addition. It shows the that this is an unstable system, If in case you're being a little bit more calm than you should be while in Pyro. They're adding the first iteration of life support for ships, so that will entail components with breathable gas and all that. Engineering is being worked on and, and brought up as well for uh, 4.0. And outposts for the, for the colonialism where it, they provide the basic necessities for small groups of people for an indefinite amount of time, like it says here. Uh, we already have these to a certain degree in Stanton, so that's not a big deal, but it's just more of them, slightly different kinds, added as well and in an entirely new system. We're also getting the Space Cow, a.k.a. the Quasi Grazer. Some more customization. Uh, for the character customizer. Uh, MFDs are being reworked to fit the HUDs of the ships. Fire hazard uh, system will, is supposedly going to come in, as it says here, tentative. This one I could see being <laughs> uh, delayed a little bit just because it touches a lot of systems, including the engineering, which is also coming in. Uh, charging and draining as well. This is new. Uh, a new ability for the multi-tools to give us the ability to overcharge objects and remove distortion damage. So I, again, one big patch here in the term uh, in terms of 323 already by the looks of it being followed up by another huge patch. But this is they said this was going to be a banner year for Star Citizen and they weren't kidding. As far as the 323 patch goes so far my experience with it has been mostly on the positive side. Yes, it is still buggy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the main bugs that I have been noticing are missions breaking, which can be very, very frustrating. Uh, at one point, I got a crime stat for reasons unknown. I just suddenly developed one. <laughs> uh, but overall, stability-wise, I haven't experienced a single crash. I haven't experienced a single server recovery needed. Um, the most I've experienced along that is some desync or some lag when the server is chugging behind, but it's usually ended up catching up. Uh, NPCs, for the most part, have stopped standing on chairs and they seem to be doing mostly what they're doing. The, the AI in combat, is it's hit or miss. Whether it's FPS or in the ships, sometimes, you know, they don't move. They don't react until you kill them. And other times, they're teleporting all over the place. But a few times, I've actually come across AI that have given me a challenge in the bunker. Because they're acting, you know, the server has been good and they're acting appropriately. Same thing with the ships. Although for some reason that, that one cutlass that keeps showing up on every damn mission to blow up your ship while you're on foot is starting to piss me off. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. In any case, folks, I would like to hear from you if you have 
been playing the 323 live patch what you think of it so far uh, are you getting used to master modes i am now uh, I'm, I'm digging the direction it's going are you liking the changes to the first person I, i'd love to hear from you uh, in the comments below again uh, if you haven't tried this game out now is the time to do it you have to the 29th free of charge costs you nothing but installing the game i would suggest it to find out what this game is all about it might be for you it might not be it you may see the potential of it and you may also see the bugs and go oh hell nah so again it's up to you if you guys want to try it out i suggest you do if not well then don't <laughs> And that is it for our news roundup of the week. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and thought I did a good job, give me a thumbs up. If not, a thumbs down as always. Like I just mentioned, uh, sound off in the comments below on this game any way you like. I, I love the discussions. Subscribe if you're new to help me grow the channel and beat that YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I've been Rage at Games, and I'll see you in the verse.